There's something we've got to talk about when it comes to achieving any level of success in your voiceover business. And it's something that I have talked about for a decade. Uh, and, you know, Lord willing, I will continue to be talking about this for a decade or more into the future as well. I think it is one of the most important aspects of marketing your voiceover business, but it is also consistently one of the most underlooked aspects of marketing your voiceover business, which is why I'm going to keep talking about it. And I say this coming from a place as someone who has literally coached thousands of voice actors on their marketing efforts. I know what is being done and what isn't being done from those conversations, from those coaching calls. And there's one thing that just comes up over and over and over and over and over again that is getting overlooked. I've talked about this in the past on podcasts, but the reason why I wanted to touch on it again today, recently I listened to a couple of different podcasts uh, that I enjoy, entrepreneurial type podcasts. And uh, I'm a huge podcast listener, probably spend a few hours every week, whenever possible anyway, listening to podcasts. One of them was an interview that Lewis Howes did on his show, The School of Greatness. Uh, and one of them was an interview that Stephen Bartlett did on his show, which is The Diary of a CEO. Interviewing two different people, uh, the basis of the interviews were, were two totally different subjects, but one thing came up in both of them. And as I was, list was listening to them talk about it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this in an episode again. I'm going to bring this up again because it's something that needs to be brought to the forefront again. And it is the idea of the follow-up. Now, in both of these cases, Stephen and Lewis were speaking with guests who are incredibly successful, multi-million dollar entrepreneurs running incredibly successful companies. And both of these interviewees touched on something very similar when it came to email marketing. Now, keep in mind when you get to a certain point, when you, you get to be a multi-million dollar CEO uh, or running a, a multi-million dollar company, uh, you're going to get a lot of marketing emails on a daily basis. And you know some of those are obviously going to be better than others. And you've got to be pretty choosy about your time. It's the one thing that you can't get any more of. And so you have to guard it. You have to decide who gets your time, who doesn't get your time. And so when it came to filtering through these marketing emails and trying to make decisions about, you know, who might get a response or who might not get a response, you know, who makes it past, I don't know, phase one of the inbox or, you know, whatever their system is, who gets past the assistant and into the actual inbox of, of the CEO. Uh, there were two things that were brought up in, in each of these interviews and by each of these multi-million dollar CEOs. First and foremost was the importance of personalization. When you send me a generic message that looks like it could literally be sent to any other person on earth, I'm going to ignore that message. And this is basically what they're saying in the interview. And this is something that I've been saying for years. I recently did an episode called Rest in Peace, Generic Marketing, where I literally talk about the death of generic marketing. And this is what I'm talking about. When you're sending out those emails, the idea with generic messages is that you can do it at scale. If you are sending generic messages, you send them out to enough people, then the, the hope is that the law of averages says, you know, if you throw enough spaghetti at the wall, some will stick. And what these CEOs were saying was, you're not getting into my inbox. If you're sending me these generic messages, I'm you're like, you're never going to get my time. The ones that I took the time to read, the ones that I took the time to respond to were the messages that actually proved that you had done a little bit of research that you got to understand my company, that you got to know something about me, that you were able to find out an interesting factoid or, or something. But the point is that you put the effort in to tailor the message. This is something that I've talked about for years. It's something that I teach in voiceover marketing playbook. It is something that I teach in my email workshops. I've taught it from conference stages as well. The importance of of making that initial contact a more personalized contact. Can you do it at the same scale? No, but you're going to put yourself in a position where you're sending fewer emails, but you're actually getting a higher conversion rate because you are taking the time to tailor the messages. It makes a big difference. So that was the first thing that came up in both of these interviews, the importance of personalization. 
The second thing that came up, both of these interviews spoken as truth by both of these multi-million dollar CEOs was the importance of follow-up. Now, one of the CEOs actually went so far as to say that sometimes he uses it as a test to find out who really truly wants it. And what he was saying was, you know, if you send me one email and then you give up, you never send me another email, that sends a message. Maybe you don't really want it that bad. Like you're obviously not willing to work that hard for it if you're going to email me one time and then give up. But if you email me two or three times, that speaks to your commitment. That speaks to your professionalism. And so I think that there's something to be said for that. And I have quoted ad nauseum for years, success is in the follow-up. If you do not have a follow-up strategy for your voiceover business, you are going to struggle. If you do not have a follow-up strategy for your voiceover business, you are going to leave money on the table, I guarantee. You're going to leave money on the table because your clients are going to forget about you and they're going to hire someone else. Your prospects are going to forget about you and they're going to hire someone else. And the leads that you've reached out to are going to forget about you. And they're going to hire someone else. You have to have a follow-up strategy. So this one particular CEO, again, he said he used it as a test. And I thought that was actually pretty insightful uh, to get that kind of information. And I also think that it gives a different narrative. The number one reason, hands down, why voice actors don't follow up. And I'm talking again, thousands of voice actors coached over the years, literally multi-thousands of hours spent in coaching sessions. The number one reason why voice actors aren't following up is because they don't want to be annoying. And we've adopted this as a mindset. We've adopted this as as a narrative of truth. If we are following up with people who haven't responded to us, then we are being annoying. I don't know where this came from. I don't know the origin story of this narrative, but I know that by and large, the industry has adopted this as truth based on no factual evidence that I have been able to find. So what if you replace that narrative of I don't want to be annoying with the narrative that the CEO is literally laying at your feet, which is I'm looking to see if you're committed. I'm looking to see if you're professional. I'm looking to see if you want it. I'm looking to see if you're going to try again. It's going to tell me about your character if you're willing to try again. What if you used that narrative instead and let that narrative be a motivating factor for you to actually send the follow-ups the other side of the argument of course is hey look there's people running companies whether they're video producers creative agencies instructional designers whatever it is filmmakers game developers they're running companies and there's more than you emailing them i don't know about you But as my business continues to grow, it becomes harder and harder for me to manage my inbox. I used to be a guy who responded to every single email, often within a few minutes. And now sometimes I can't respond to an email for a couple of days because I just have a massive volume of email coming in, but I've also got a lot going on. And so sometimes that gentle follow-up, just to remind me that you messaged me, you'd be surprised how many times that message gets the response. Because, again, narrative, the common and accepted narrative for why somebody is not responding to an email is they're not interested, they don't want us, we've annoyed them, we've upset them, right? It's all negative narratives. But what if the actual narrative is they're busy, they got a lot of messages, they meant to respond, but it got lost in the shuffle, they meant to respond, but they forgot, they wanted to respond, but they couldn't at the time because they had something else going on. And when they came back to do it later, they couldn't find the message or they forgot. And none of those are negative. None of those are negative narratives. Why not adopt those narratives? So the purpose that I really want to communicate more than anything is how essential it is to your success to follow up. If you do not have a strategy in place for sending follow-up emails, I guarantee you that you are missing out on opportunities You are missing out on potential new clients. You are potentially letting previous clients slip through your fingers and into someone else's hands because you are not staying 
top of mind. Follow-up can take shape in a lot of different ways. And there are a lot of different follow-up strategies that we that we can talk about. I teach an entire masterclass. It's a two-hour masterclass called Follow-Up Academy. I teach an entire masterclass on how to get better at follow-up. I teach an entire section of voiceover marketing playbook on the importance of follow-up and different follow-up strategies. So if you get nothing else from this episode, it's time to change your narrative on follow-up. It's time to change it from a negative narrative of being annoying or salesy or pushy. And I suppose it could look like that if you're not following up in the right way. But the reality is what you're doing by following up is showing that you care. What you're doing by following up is showing that you're committed. What you're doing by following up is showing that you are a professional. What you're doing by following up is showing that you pay attention to the details. That's the narrative. That's the mindset that you need to have on this. And you have to build a follow-up strategy. Start with a simple CRM, a simple CRM that you can put your leads or prospects and your clients in, and you can set automated reminders at different cycles that will pop up and say, it's time to get in touch with so-and-so again. If you've got a client in your database that you haven't had communication with in more than six months, chances are you've missed out on an opportunity. Chances are they forgot about you or they went and hired somebody else because that person was there or present or who they were thinking of. That's the name that was top of mind at the time. Hey, we need a 30 second voiceover for the video. Oh yeah. Get Bob. I, Bob just messaged me the other day. So just, you know, reach out to him and get him to do it. Sometimes that's what books. I know this because I've had clients tell me this. You've got to have a follow-up strategy in place. It is one of the most overlooked and underappreciated aspects of the voiceover marketing side of this game. You've done all the other things that you needed to do. You've done your training. You've got your professional demos. You've built a beautiful website to house them on. Uh, maybe you're even sending that initial email communication to try to drive traffic to your website, get them to listen to your demos. Maybe you weren't making them email personal. So now you're going to take the time to make the email personal because we've learned that, but you've also got to have a plan in place for follow-up. If you're not sending at least a couple of follow-ups on every one of those new leads, you're going to convert a much lower percentage. If you're not sending consistent follow-up communication to your existing database of prospects and clients, they're going to hire somebody else because they're going to be thinking about somebody else. Always be thinking about how you can keep yourself top of mind. And if you don't want to take my word for it, because I'm just a lowly voice actor, take the word of these multi-million dollar CEOs twice now in a week. I've heard it from two different multi-million dollar CEOs on two different podcasts talking about two different subjects. But both times this point came up and it made me realize we got to bring it up again. Let me ask you a question. Why? Are you not following up? Or tell me about a time when you followed up and it worked. Because I think that there are a lot of people that could be inspired by those success stories as well. So drop those in the comments. Either tell me a time when you had a success from follow up so that we can be inspired by that, or tell me why you're not following up so that we can come up with a strategy to help you build a system to get over whatever that, that bridge is, that, that hurdle that is keeping you from doing the follow-up. So drop it in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going.